our select board meeting to order for July 17th, 2019. Uh, we will roll into the consent agenda here. We have minutes to approve from April 3rd, 2019 and April 10th, 2019. We have warrants WP1953S-2, WP1953S, WP1953, AP2002S, and AP2002. We have a liquor license for a charity wine tasting, Fragile X, October 6, 2019. Would you like to say something about that? I can just wait. Yep. Yeah, okay. Um, surplus property under $500. Uh, we've got a HP LaserJet 4015 and a one day liquor license for Most Holy Redeemer, September 8, 2019. So, should we pull off Fragile X and Most Holy Redeemer? Uh, those are two separate ones. Right, so pull both of them out. You want to pull both of them out? Okay. I think Jane's here to speak. Oh, is she? Okay. Is someone here to oh, speak about Most no, Holy Redeemer? No, 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 no
And occasionally I would hear, you know, back, I would get a phone call back, but never any follow through, no advocacy. Months ago, I asked for a creation of a human rights commission from the town of Hadley, and the select board agreed to have a human rights commission, which they will be calling, I think, the Gentility Inclusion Group. And I brought it up. I thought that that word, the wording was, the fact that you're having something is very nice. But we're living in dangerous times, and we need a group that's proactive and responsive. When I look at the word, as I said to you before, gentility and inclusion, I think we've gone way past that point at Golden Court. When tenants are not responded to by people in the town of Hadley, by politicians, town employees, we feel impotent, we feel disempowered, we feel devalued and angry. We have that happen to us every day living at Golden Court when we're not heard. And we are really abused people. We've come to you and we've told you about this numerous times. It's as if Golden Court has a border wall or fence around it. We are a state-funded senior and disabled housing authority, but constantly we hear from the town that we're state and you're town. But guess what? We live in the town of Hadley, and we want people in the town to be responsive to us. <coughs> What's going on and now in, in our housing authority, as far as bullying goes, is they're wanting to strip our gardens away Many of us have lived in, in Golden Court for 14 or 15 years. We have a little garden right underneath our windows. They want to take them out. No reason other than they want us to put hedges in so we all look the same. Well, guess what? We're not all the same, yet, and we love our gardens. They've already stripped our trees away, and on this Friday, they want to cut more of our trees. And most of these trees they're cutting are not near a building, and they're not diseased. We think it's done, you know, being done just for spite purposes. They, the things that they've taken away from us lately is they don't put our air conditioners in anymore for us. They've turned off our outside water and sorted them shut. So we, you know, we, we have to come in and out if we want to water these little gardens that they want to take away. Um, the, the air conditioners, I said, no refrigerators for anybody anymore. This is not happening across the board at all, you know, housing authorities that are state funded. But we, every day we turn around, they're taking something more away from us. Um, the other people can speak. I think I pretty much said it, and I'm hoping that eventually you will respond to us at Golden Court. I guess I'm sorry. <coughs> My name is Judy Ron Colley. I live at Golden Court. Um, we're confused about are we run, are we under the auspices of the town or not? The police come there, the fire come there. The board of directors is voted in by the residents of Hadley. And yet, when we're being abused by them, nobody seems to care. They use foul language with us, they yell at us, they throw the gavel at us. They're, they're just awful. They're angry and they want to control us. So I guess my question would be, how could we attempt to have a recall of these people that are voted in by the residents of Hadley? Somebody has to take some pride in who represents their town. And, and it certainly isn't the members of the board or the director. The director sits there at her table and lets them, I don't even want to use the language that they've used on us. But it's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. And the racism is alive and well with our board. And you probably all know who they are because they're well known people in Hadley. And they get voted in because they're well townies. In they're townies. They're, they're, they, everybody in Hadley knows them and they just vote them in. The public doesn't even take the time to get to know these people and who they're dealing with. They're dealing with elderly and handicapped people. We for want some action. <laughs> for, for information purposes, can you um, just describe the recall process? Sure. So a long time ago, uh, long before I became town administrator, the town of Hadley adopted a uh, recall provision. Most cities and towns across the Commonwealth don't have that, but Hadley does. Um, it's by special act of legislation of the, of the uh, legislature in Boston. Uh, a copy of it is on file with the town clerk. 
um, and it's a public document and we can get you a copy of that. Uh, in that recall provision, special act of legislation, there are steps to be taken and that's clearly spelled out. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. I will follow up with that. I'm Maureen McGrath, and I've been <coughs> number 18. I've been there 14 years. And this is so confusing me. What are you saying there? Are you saying the state is responsible for us and Hadley has nothing to do with it? That is the message we get all the time. He just told you about the yeah, recall process. It, and he did, didn't say anything about whether or not we I were I didn't hear him very well, for one thing. It's a recall process that he was talking about. Meaning, meaning the, what? That if you would like to remove the elected officials okay. that are governing you, you need to do a recall process, and that needs to go through the town clerk. Okay. Oh. So you, can go, to the, you can go to the town clerk and get your information that you need to do that. Right. That sounds very good. Otherwise, that is the best news I've heard yet. Otherwise, we as a select board, even though we're governing the town, these are other elected officials that we have no power over, as with the school right. committee, the planning board, any elected official is an entity amongst themselves. But there is somebody uh, the parking rec commission. Everybody that's elected is part of what their own community is or what their uh, board that they do. So if somebody wanted to recall somebody here on the select board, they would have to file a petition to do that. So that would be the same thing with any other elected board. So that's the process that has to take place. Did you motion yeah. towards me for a reason? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just saying. I, I got the oh, hand going there amongst all of us. So if anybody 14 wanted. years, that's the only answer I've heard that makes sense and I can understand. Well, and if the select board had appointed somebody, then we could t t take action and remove them. Yeah, well, but, we just, all we're looking elected. for is an answer to how, who to go to. Right. Mm -hmm. Because we feel like there's, we felt over these years that there was no one. The state really the state, governs In the beginning, the state property. seemed quite interested, but they have definitely backed off. They've got bigger fish to fry now. And we live here in Hadley, and the people that are on the board are elected by the people in Hadley. And the, and so and what but choice? The, so, what but the board do? that you that people have elected there are still governed by the state and the policies set by the state for housing. So they follow those policies that come out of the state, even though that they're elected officials for Hadley. I have to say that that is very debatable. <coughs> that. I don't even know that they've read those papers. I know that way back they were given those papers. I know that for a fact, but they might as well have just burned them up because they aren't followed. And one other comment I have too is there is an ethics board state ethics board you can file a complaint to if you feel there are ethics violations happening Write that and down. you know <laughs> I don't know the exact web address to that but you know you can look it up online I believe there's a hotline and you know you can send them an email and mm -hmm. all those things <laughs> just the caveat to that yeah. is um, they can only follow up in certain types of ethics violations mm -hmm. so bad behavior isn't necessarily something that the ethics board would pursue but on the other hand if there was some sort of what you felt to be a gross neglect of duty that type of thing or something that was purposeful they might be willing to hear that but is there anyone here that could save our gardens we love our gardens here, I can give you a number and we love our trees and we don't want any more yeah. trees they've already clear cut so many of our trees we have I no place to I can give you a number to the ethics commission if you like it. And I have one more oh, question yeah, if you don't mind. It's uh, 1617 371 9500. And what is that? The <laughs> ethics commission. State I, I, I have one ethics comment commission. about that. Anything that's a Boston number you're lucky in the first place if they answer. They do Secondly, answer. They do answer, they answer. And, okay. and the attorney we general's call Boston many uh, times, and answer. that's what happens. No one ever gets back. But well. they want to take our trees down Friday. Yeah, they have a Friday. question about the trees. <laughs> so <laughs> like there's nothing house. wrong with them. We've already had trees I, missing. I, I understand. So we're. I'm sure all of us are, are happy to, to listen to the concerns and point you in the right direction. The problem is we can't direct another elected official to tell them, hey, you have to stop cutting down this tree. So. I don't know what the process would be to try to stop something like that, but I mean, 
maybe contact the state, maybe contact those board members, but we as a select board don't have the power to we tell them, hey, you, you can't cut down the trees. How about you as human beings wanting to save our trees <laughs> <laughs> and our flowers <laughs> and forget <laughs> the select board? Well, yeah, I, I can your that, title. I <laughs> very much weight, so. <laughs> I have a question about that. So I was told today that um, any time a tree, and you can correct me on this, I, I'm sure, if a tree is going to be cut down on public property, it has to get marked and it has to be heard by somebody. Not so at Golden Court, they can just come in and cut down and do whatever the hell they no, want. No, that, that's on town property. The town has uh, stipulations for a hearing for town trees on town property. So you're going to stick state, to state that and pro <laughs> No, state and private can cut their own trees down on their own property. Another 617. So, so if, I can be able, if I can be helpful <laughs> in the slightest, um, the state agency that uh, supervises housing authorities is the Department of Housing and Community PACD. Development. They don't call back. We've tried for years. We, they don't ever call back. They don't respond to texts and they don't respond to Facebook or email. They've been like that for at least three or four years. In the first five years that I was there, they used to come up from Boston to see us and sit with us and listen to us. They don't do that anymore. So we're, we're treading we water to get by them ourselves. To come, but they do not come. The yeah. other um, option there for opportunity would be to speak with Dan Carey. We, yep. To we, see we if put he a call in. Him. We put a call in to him. Yeah, even if it's just to have him drop a dime to get them to call you. So yeah. you can yeah. use his office that way. We can keep doing that. Mm -hmm. All right, you. we're going to wrap up the yeah. public comment, but thank you. Thank you. Okay. Is there anyone else? We do have three more minutes if there's anyone else. Okay. Uh -oh. okay. Um, all right. I just want to move into our 2019 end of year transfers. Get that we'll call stuff real quick. Oh, 645. Do we have a thing? Ah, man. I was trying to get them out of here. Okay. We have a poll hearing for 645. Is anybody here from uh, Verizon or Eversource? Yep. I'm also here from Eversource. If there's any questions on what's going for what any questions on the Verizon polls? Uh, can you guys, we have a lot of polls here, so are there, is there anything specific to point out? Are they all just replacing existing polls? Are they new polls? Um, the ones that I have, no. one on Huntington Road, two on Combs Road, and one on Roosevelt Street are all new polls. Okay. okay. So, so I guess there's the four poll hearings that I'm aware of tonight. Three are Verizon set, one is Eversource set. The three that are Verizon set are part of a grid mod project that we have going on for voltage regulators. Mm -hmm. And voltage regulators going up are to um, kind of clean up the power quality of the area, mostly due to solar fields, the fluctuation of voltage as clouds come over throughout the day. Voltage goes up, goes down. Um, past our tolerances that we're allowed to provide <coughs> customers. So we need these voltage regulators to manage that voltage so we can continue to give everybody clean, consistent power. So those would be the three Verizon set um, pole locations. So so the Westgate ones coming from a new solar field? So that those are gonna be Eversource only sets. So that's part of another petition. So we kinda we have four petitions, three are Verizon set new poles, and then there are some Two new poles on Westgate for our solar field. <coughs> I'll make a motion to accept the Verizon and the Eversource poles. Second. Okay, any further discussion? I just have one comment. I had somebody contact me through the town after there was an article in the paper in Northampton sure. of a telephone wire being down and Verizon replacing it quickly or getting rid of it. And this residence on Frallo Drive in Hadley, and I guess there's a telephone line down there, and it's been that way for a while. And she, she said was it was concerned. a telephone line. Yeah, like her. Look at it, but. Yeah, her neighbor had telephone, and it got disconnected, and now it's just kind of oh, lingering no. there. Okay. What was that address again? Sorry, in the heart it's on Frallo it's Drive. Drive. It's up off of Breckenridge. Okay. Do you know by what uh, house address? So there's uh, like 10 houses on that street. It's not. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Number nine was the address. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Great. Thanks. 
Uh, I will definitely go back to Verizon with that. Okay, yeah, thank you. <coughs> um, okay, any other discussion? Mm -hmm. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Oh, is there an a butter here? I'm sorry. Oh, uh, yes. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. No, no, it's okay. I've never been to a Hadley meeting, so yeah. I'm not exactly sure how they work. That's cool. Oh, that's okay, yeah. Yes. Yeah, what, um, where are you in a butter? I'm Hannah, and I work at the UMass Fat College Federal Credit Union. Okay. And so we got a card about it, and I just have some questions about sure. when the work will be done. Obviously, we're, our concern is that any type of digging, mm -hmm. sometimes what we've experienced at other, some of our other locations, when someone comes to dig, they accidentally cut a fiber which um, shuts down power or internet to our uh, organization and shuts down our business. Gotcha. Um, so we'd like some information about what so, you're doing, what you're doing. So the, the ones you're talking about, Westgate Center Drive, um, what that one's going to be is we're changing a pole at the intersection of Route 9 and Westgate Center Drive. We're gonna be going underground from there, um, pretty much to the, uh, to the roundabout at the end of Westgate Center Drive, so all that will be underground. All the way um, to the solar fields? All the, well, so all the way to the roundabout, we're gonna rise back up there and then go overhead to the solar field. Um, so you're gonna be on the Staples side? Correct. Yeah. Everything will be being done on the Staples side. If you go into Staples, there's kind of a rut there right now, okay. so that's where the digging would take place. Um, I don't have an updated construction schedule. It's based on when the solar customer is ready to go. Okay. Um, it would be this year, but <coughs> I can definitely send back to the construction team that we need to make sure we express caution when we're digging there to make sure we don't hit any fiber and we make sure we get it in good shape. Okay, great. And then could you, can I give you my information to have them contact me when they... I can do that. Okay, yep. Awesome. Yep. Perfect. Great. All set. Any other butters here? <coughs> okay. All right. Thank you. You guys are good to go. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, now maybe we could sneak in end of year transfers real quick since the finance committee is here. Okay, so uh, uh, our accountant gave us a uh, list of transfers, line to line transfers. We've already done the transfers from the reserve fund. Some of these we've already voted, but he just consolidated everything together, so uh, we'll be re voting some of this. But it ranges from a large, uh, uh, I think the largest transfer is $20,000, $22,000, and the smallest is four cents. Um, the larger context is that the end of the fiscal year looks very strong, both yeah. in terms of expenses being lower than <coughs> projected and revenues being higher than expected. So we're ending up the year in a strong position, which is obviously going to be good for free cash moving forward. So we're in a situation where we're just tidying up uh, several lines. Again, most of this we've voted again, but it's been restated under one document. Okay. I have a few questions. Go ahead, Amy. Okay. Uh, so I, I was just wondering on the, you know, we have the 22,000 coming out of police to fund snow and, and, and the ice. And then we have 15,000 from police for the unemployment and another 25 from police for the help. Uh, is, why is, I, I was just didn't realize we had such a large amount in the police budget. What happened that we have so much? The number of salary lines that weren't completely used up in the F, uh, in FY19 in the police department. So that fund is monies that are available to supplement other budgets that don't run into the red. But I think, you know, the other part of the question though would be, do we have a sense why? I mean, were there there vacancies there were during vac the there years? There vacancies and, and uh, we've, been we've been working very hard on uh, reducing overtime. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, we well, have it's a good thing that we have extra. Yeah. Yeah. Right. No, I just, just asked Mike last week, and he said there's still one more full-time position that's still vacant too. So, yeah. okay. you know that he had budgeted for, and he just hired, I believe, three last yeah. last, yeah, last week. week. Last yeah. week. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, specials, and then one full-time yeah. last week. Yeah. 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 So it's been some fluidity. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but what we don't expect that next time. It's just a one-time thing. Okay. And the last question would be. So on the last transfer I see for the 25,000, uh, that went from police to <coughs> unemployment, but it's for the health insurance. Health insurance. 
Is it is still yeah, down? So the that should be oh one nine one four five okay. one seventy. Okay. Yeah, health insurance. Yeah, health insurance. Mm -hmm. David. Oh, Linda. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah uh, Chris, I, yeah, I, I apologize, David, if you could see my email on this, but we did just to submit one more, uh, the bill for June unemployment insurance. So if on that one, 913, if we could increase that by 457, which is being paid this week, that total would then be 16,309. Okay. So Jennifer, I think you have the original document, so can we make two adjustments to the document in the last one where it says, um, the very last line is, um, Transfers to uh, 01913. If we could change that over to uh, 01914. <coughs> and Linda, where was the other transfer? Uh, the total should be 16309 Where? Uh, for unemployment. 913. Um, oh. Department 913 transfer amount requested <coughs> would be 16309 and should you Thank make you. the intest then the change from the instead of having the ending banks the anticipated additional amount? Mm -hmm. uh, we're actually spending it this week, so oh, okay. I, I added it in instead of adding doing the anticipated, but okay. so that's an I've additional. Got. I just said because your ending balances. The one other one two is regional ambulance two thirty or two thirty one because it's in that line it says department two thirty regional ambulance but then it says transfer two oh one two three one dash fifty three hundred. Yeah. Oh, I see. Change there. Two places. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, right. So over um, the end of ending balance would be um, sixteen thousand three oh nine. The ending amount, it's not the yeah, 25? Yeah, both, both places. Both places. I didn't realize there are two places to change it. The transfer the amount requested would be 16309 and then over on the right where it says estimated ending balance, that also should be 16309 And that is replacing the 25500 for No, no. Yes. Um, one line up, um, Jennifer. Uh, this is on the unemployment. Uh, I'm sorry, I see. Jennifer, yeah. Oh, yeah, that would be lovely. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, this is just here. This is here. And with those changes, do you want to have a motion? Right. And then I was just going to make a motion to <laughs> approve these That's transfers with the um, change of uh, Department 914, change the account to read 914. And Department 913 changed this whole to 16,309. Okay. Thank you. Second. And then I just had the one regional ambulance, that line. Is, is that correct? It says that? 230 in one line and 231 in another <coughs> one. So just to get that straight. Linda, do you know if ambulance is yeah. 230 or 231? 231. It's 231. Okay. So that line there should just say Department 231. 231. Just to Oh, up top. Up to, yeah, yeah up top the there. Label. It just was the okay. account and number. And then also uh, modify Department 230 Regional Ambulance to read 231 Regional Ambulance. Second the modification. <coughs> okay, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. I'd like to make a motion um, in exactly what. Um, <laughs> <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> okay. All right, we have this form for you to sign. Yeah, seven o'clock. Um, is it okay to start two minutes early? Is everyone here for the public hearing for transfer of license from Fonzie's Beer and Wine to Bottles and Brew, DBA Valley Wine and Craft? Yes, we are. Okay, great. Um, so, yeah, you guys can talk right there, whatever is more comfortable for you. If you want to sit, you can stand.
Jennifer. Uh, my name is Christy Bodine. I'm the attorney for the applicant. Okay. okay. Uh, Bottle and Brew Inc. DBA, two DBA, Valley Land, and, and something small. Crap, I <coughs> um, This is an application for transfer of license. Um, uh, Mr. Cheng has been running a liquor store, a full, full, full liquor store, long out of four, four years now. <coughs> Um, he's the former owner of the International Food Market that burned up at, in the okay. up under ninth. Mm -hmm. He's going to have the residence for how long? Eight years. Yeah, <laughs> long time. Yeah. So he's looking to kind of expand his, his existing business and add another store. Um, what he's planning to do is sort of fine wines and, and kind of craft beers. It's not going to be uh, necessarily kegs and and and, um, and he's been doing that pretty successfully down in Long Meadows. So um, the store is currently closed. He's going to clean it up, uh, you know, clean out the interior and and uh, reopen it and hopefully add to the the offerings in the town of Hamburg. So if you have any questions, please ask away. Mm -hmm. So my only question is for a transfer versus a new license. Is the, is the fee the same or how does that work? What's the, what's the difference in wording between the two? Fonzie's has already paid for the license for this year, okay. so they're transferring it. There's no additional fee for this year, and then it flips over for next year and becomes their license, and they issue it in their name after the ABCC approves it. And um, from your standpoint, from everything that needs to be checked off, the licensing? Yes, I've checked with the fire chief and the building inspector and the chief of police, they all are okay with it. Uh, chief Spank able to say that there were inspections that needed to be completed before business would be able to open. And also uh, the town clerk has said that they need to make sure that they have their uh, business certificate in place right. when, before they can open. Right. But as far as the application, it's full and complete. Um, the chief just asked that the inspections take place and the Corrections are made before they reopen. What's your uh, target opening date? Depends on when the license is issued. <laughs> <laughs> and plus some time to clean up, spruce up the locations. Yeah. And it's going to be in that same spot, right next to uh, Primo there. Exactly, yeah. it'll be mm -hmm. the same spot. It's just clean up and, and, and do new floor and paintings, uh, toss out some old fixtures. And mm -hmm. Okay. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Good luck Welcome. to you. Yeah. Thanks. Excited to check it out. Yeah. Uh, we'll let you know when we open. Uh, Great. Hope not too long. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sounds good. Well, thank maybe you. you'll Thanks. see some of us in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's for the bad rush on Wednesdays. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, I was just. Uh, Senior director. Yeah, it, uh, I was going to say we have uh, new business, a resignation of our senior services director. Do you know if she's yeah, coming? She's going to be later in the agenda. Okay, it's later in the agenda, so I can uh, uh, skip over that right now. Um, we could just move on to select board goals and objectives, get that off our list. Um, so I put together uh, some of our uh, goals and objectives. I guess I actually forgot to put the SWOT analysis on there, but that's kind of within our calendar um, that falls in there. But here are some of my suggestions for goals and objectives for the select board for the coming year. <coughs> Uh, continue to oversee the successful completion of the three municipal building projects, senior center, library, and fire substation, <coughs> hire a full-time human resources director for the town, sign a host community agreement with at least one adult use marijuana retail location, hire a new senior services director, uh, even though we didn't get to that yet, uh, sell North Hadley Village Hall prior to December of 2019, <coughs> review DPW staffing levels and needs, create a plan to get sewer funding back on track and prepare for the large capital project we will be undertaking along Route 9 in 2021, it might be later, depending on that construction project. Plan for future transitions of key roles in town governing government, retaining as much institutional knowledge as possible, 
Um, <coughs> fiscal year 2021 budget process should include plans to have a town planner and be focused on improvements to the DPW, ensure compliance with new mandates, including OSHA and MS4, continue to apply for grant funding that can help the town with municipal vulnerability and capital improvement projects. That's all I could think of quickly to put down. <laughs> it's quite a list, um, but a lot of the stuff we're already actively uh, engaged with, I would say. So there shouldn't be anything too new on here. I don't know if you guys have any other additions. I could have easily forgotten stuff because there's a lot going on. The only one I would add is I'd like to have a um, definitive direction to go with Russell School by the end of the year. Okay. Taking, so my, working I'm on that. taking my stuff away for later. <laughs> Just because you have an in with somebody? No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and saying that, I have more to add because okay. I was at the uh, building committee meeting last night, so I won't go into a whole lot of detail right now. But the one thing is, is they would like to be put on the agenda for August, uh, our first meeting in August. Mm -hmm. Okay they would like to come before us. Mm -hmm. And the only um, thing I would suggest we modify Go is for, it. for number five, you have sell North Hadley Village Hall prior to December of 2019. Mm -hmm. um, we'll have our own opinions about that, but certainly I'd, I'd love <coughs> to see that happen, but we have to allow for the possibility that it won't. So yeah. maybe we can just further say, Dispose of um, <laughs> you know, or, or determine a disposition plan, yeah. you know. Hey, we already, we already <laughs> set a date. I, I was trying to be positive with my goal. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, e either way is a better result than we have now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, it's just we don't have control it's either over that. Or that. Yeah. One I know. Yeah. Well, uh, on that line, David, did we, we have a date for that RFP? Yep, and August it is 27th. August 27th. So hopefully August 27th, if anybody wants to put an offer in on North Hadley Village Hall, that's when you got to have it in. All right. Yeah. There were, in saying that, though, with the RFP, one of the things they brought up last night was the uh, kind of doing something about uh, an addendum to the uh, preservation uh, restoration to the parking area. So there's a little bit of a problem with selling the building and not having enough parking there. So we at one point had talked about um, extending maybe 50 feet to the north um, when we were going to sell the building before. So that's, you know, been brought up in selling it. There is no parking there. They would have to remove where the fire truck is mm -hmm. um, to allow some building on mm -hmm. the south side. Um, but that was one of the things for us to think about for the addendum to the RFP. So we again will probably have that before the August 27th when that RFP. My only concern with doing that is, you know, we wanted to, to sell the whole thing, and the town said no. Yeah. We don't want to remove the protections from the ball field, so we're going to give up 50 feet of the ball field, which is protected. Uh, yeah. I don't see how that's going to. Um, that's what I see too. I'm not seeing the path. I don't know how we do that. All right, it was just brought yeah. up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. I agree. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think I mean, that's going to be tough to find something to do with it, but I just. Right. I don't want to have to go back to another town, town meeting just to get no. out of it. So. Yeah. No. You know, so. I, I, I think on uh, Channel 57, the email that we received mm -hmm. uh, for a tour is, is I, I know David doesn't think it's a good idea, but I do think it's a good idea because yeah. maybe we'll have a broader uh, aspect of, of people to come in and take a look and, and maybe put a bid on it. Yeah, I know. I saw it too. As a, if you want to do it, John, I was I said I'd do it, but if you want to do it, <laughs> go for it. Yes, I'll need to get the keys and open it up for them. But I would be the last person you want me to do that. They were they were looking for somebody uh, for for the historical portion of it too. You know, and yeah. I don't I don't have enough of uh, historical uh, knowledge on that place, but you know the tour. Uh, I think it's a good idea. Maybe Joe Zagrodnik or Alan Zahowski. Yep. who has done other presentations. Yeah, we can um, ask around. Mm -hmm. I think he did one during our 350th. <coughs> Alan did some type of presentation up to the... Uh, I don't know who's left that one. He did one up at the Historical um, yeah. Society. He's done a couple on the History historical of Historical or, or yeah. maybe uh, anybody that's still around that went to school there. Yeah. Would be a good one to talk to. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know who. Well, I don't think anybody's here that went to school there. No. Yeah, there's still a few. Really? Yes. Oh. <clears throat> All right, so if you wanted, if 
anybody out there wants to do historical possible piece on it's WGB why why connecting point connecting point uh, we have you know Valley contact uh, Jennifer <coughs> in probably the next week because I think it's something they want to do relatively soon yeah which yeah. makes sense to get it in before August too yeah um, okay and with that so do you want us to we, accept these or we can accept take, them take them under advisement or what do you want what do you guys want to do take them under advisement and keep on working on them. i mean i'd say accept them where we already work, yeah, working on them. i'm not so i'm not working on them. i don't think any of these are you know out of left field <laughs> no, so and if we're, it's kind of somebody thinks of something after the fact we can add it i don't yeah. think we need a vote on it i think it's just things that we agree upon informational that, yeah. informational that we're going to be working on these things the next year yeah, yeah. Okay. Don't I put mean. a fire to us to hold it. <laughs> we will work on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's fine with me. We don't need to vote on it. Okay. And it's 710. So... What else do we have? Let's see. Senior Center. Do we want to go over sewer operations and capital budget options? Do you think we could Probably do that? Then. Five quickly that seems like a little bit longer what if subject. i do a quick thing on the municipal building there you go sure okay Today. sounds great um I they, could also do scene. they brought up a um a good point about i'm not sure if we even talked about it at our our meetings about um gary berg or other town employees um being involved with other town committees it's kind of hard when you have people that work in the town but also serve on other committees i don't have a problem with it but i think there are some instances where people do have a problem with it. So I think we just need to clear that up, that we do have people such as Tim or Gary <coughs> or other people that are on these committees that work on them. And I didn't realize that there was a problem. Is there a problem? I, I think there have been a couple of challenges. Um, one of them, what a couple of people I know have, have said to me is, you know, these folks, if they're volunteering their time, you know, on these committees. So people were questioning, are they, are they also getting paid when they're on these committees? Is the committee work interfering with their ability to get their regular jobs done? Um, that kind of thing. Yeah, but most of the meetings are after, unless they're held within, like, the senior center during the day or some things like that that take place where you have to go to a uh, building meeting of, you know, uh, finance or something like that that takes place um, during the construction process. Um, I think, I think the, the people have to be ever mindful of the state ethics laws. Yeah. Mm -hmm. if, you're, if you're making decisions on a committee that's going to ultimately affect your, your work, job. not just in terms of mm -hmm. eating up hours, but mm -hmm. uh, increasing uh, some sort of financial incentive. Game. Um, that, that needs to be carefully thought through. Mm -hmm. I and, and will say, oh, I was just going to say that I know, like you mentioned Gary, but he's been great on um, having him yeah, yeah. participate mm -hmm. in the senior center meetings mm -hmm. because whether he's there as a town representative or as a citizen of Hadley, it's great just having him there because he is actively participating in carrying well, out there portions was some of the question project. about him so. being on the municipal building committee, and I don't yeah. have a problem with that. Well, I wonder if the question, I mean, yeah. maybe maybe a way around it is to, we have committees where people like aren't voting members, but they're advisory. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think having having the breadth of knowledge <coughs> is great, right. and especially like yeah. the example you're giving with with Gary in particular mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. the um, on the senior center building committee. But you know, I guess I question: Do they have to actually vote, mm -hmm. or are they? they're really more for informational purposes. Mm -hmm. Because when, when they flip over to the advocacy side, then I think it does become a little bit slippery with the whole ethics issue. Okay. Okay, Jane? Okay. Gary is not a voting member. He is not, okay, thank oh, you for okay. clarifying All right, that. well, yes. so, so that mm -hmm. seems to, mm -hmm. so I guess it's a question of do we want to um, so make the change on. It's, it wouldn't be in that case, but the Municipal Building Committee 
you've got uh, both Gary and Tim, Tim. right? Yeah, Tim does inspections. Uh, he inspects some of the stuff that he's... be careful there. Right. Mm -hmm. Does he vote on the, does Tim vote? I think they do, and that's why I think maybe we just need to change them to advisory members, not voting members. I think members. as long as they announce what they're doing and what they're voting for. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. if, if, as long as they're up front yeah, about it. Yeah, they're up front mm -hmm. about it. The and they area. have been right along anyway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we reviewed North Hadley Hall, we reviewed the Russell School Hall, Hall um, doing th certain things, so they'll bring that presentation to us in August. Um, we talked about the parking lot. Um, they're planning on going before the, uh, not putting the cart before the horse, but going to the uh, planning board meeting and just getting their thoughts on that, on the parking. Um, before we actually do anything there and, and seeing what we need to do, with the, with whether we need to do the ZBA first uh, to get a variance for it or, you know, just getting the feel of the planning board. We want them involved with it from the beginning. Mm -hmm. So um, I had a lot of questions on that because it was released to us. Yes, and I sent that to you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, all the, f the fees should be... Uh, well, they'll bring that up again yeah. at our next meeting. I just but wanted I mean, this, you to this, have that ahead of time. The parking lot is something that we're not going to be able to fast track by the looks of this, you know. Yeah, it's going to take some time. Mm -hmm. So I okay. wanted you to have yep. that, yeah, and we'll talk about it at our next meeting. I sent and it that's on the use free cash seven. Pay for it. Yes. I think it's our next one. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yep. All right, thanks, Trace. Okay. Um, so just the last uh, comment on that is that there's a proposal for 16000 <coughs> and change there. Uh, that needs to be uh, submitted to the Capital Planning Committee. I did send that message to them also today. Good. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Now we can do our uh, audit presentation. So. That's what I'm saying. That sixteen thousand. Some of those fees probably be waived. Tanya, you are here for our fiscal year 2018 audit presentation. I don't know if you'd like to go through it. Page by page, right? Everyone yeah. Mm -hmm. that? Yep. Every word. Every mm -hmm. one. All right. And I'll say short version, please. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. I was going to ask, yeah. you know, I know all of you kind of sat through my presentation before, but first I want to congratulate the town on my falling upgrade. That's oh. very, very Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So, Thank you. Um, do you guys have the financial statements and the manager letter? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so abbreviated version, I won't give you the whole spiel about the audit and um, details about the financial statements, but if you do want to look at page 11, we're going to look at some of the numbers on that page. Now page 11 is the statement of net position, which is similar to a balance sheet. Um, and these are one of the sets of financial statements or financial pages in your financial statements. Um, and what these statements intend to do is show municipal operations like a business. So sh you take um, the different funds of the towns, consolidate them together, and, and then add things such as your capital assets, your long-term debt, and your other long-term liabilities like net pension liability and net OPEB liability. Um, and I did want to touch base on those, those two long-term liabilities. Um, about three quarters of the page three quarters of the way down the page on the left hand side under your non-current liabilities you'll see your net pension liability at the end of 2018 that liability was just over nine million dollars and that number represents the town's share of the Hampshire County retirement systems unfunded liability so as of their most recent actuarial evaluation the system itself was about 63 percent funded which somewhere in the middle of what we're what we've seen somewhere we, you know we've seen anywhere from like 50 percent to 70 plus percent funded so they're they're not horrible and it's not you know fantastic but um and the town itself represents about five percent of the entire system so your liability is about five percent of the total unfunded liability of the system um, as you're aware you have a you have a funding schedule and you have to pay an amount every year in order to to um, help fund and reduce that liability. Um, and every couple of years when the retirement system gets a new actuary evaluation, they review it and they update the schedule slightly if need be, depending on how the system did um, over the past couple of years compared to what they thought they would do. So for instance, um, whether they did better 
and the investment returns than they anticipated, things like that. Does anyone have any questions about that? I do, actually. Okay. Um, it's kind of ancillary to that, but um, has to do with the Hampshire Council of Government situation. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you have any light <laughs> that could be shed on the fact that um, with their closing, right. that they're going to have a situation where they have employees in yep. for both OPEB and for the pension system, right. and the entity is defunct. So, right. and the state, uh, to my knowledge, hasn't really figured out a path forward. So, yeah, and unfortunately, I don't know any more than they do at this point in time. Um, I know the they're still working on figuring out whether or not the state is going to take over funding those liabilities um, or the responsibility of liabilities, moving moving those people to the state system and therefore taking all that responsibility. Um, I, I don't know. I'm and sorry. I understand that there is a possibility that because they're county yep. that it could enter back to the Hampshire municipalities. It could. Um, I mean, we've always been told that wasn't likely it's to happen, all speculation. But, yeah. right, but, exactly. it, but now the rubber has hit the road. It's Maybe that's it. something that we're going to ask Dan Curie, right. the rep. Right. I think he'd probably have a little bit more. Yeah, and, and um, Joe Comerford's chief of staff yeah. is the point yeah. person on it, too. Right. So. Yeah, and I think it's new to them, too. I mean, it's not often the municipality or quasi-municipal um, operation goes out of business. So um, they're trying to work, work through this. Um, and I, I don't know, sorry. If that, I mean, if that was the case, then their portion of their unfunded liability, which I think is like 1%, a little over 1% of the liability, um, would be distributed, I guess, to the other members. But I would find it hard to believe that the state would just leave that and leave to everyone else to fund, but I, I don't know. Yeah, I, don't, don't I know. hope not for everyone else to say, but. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that, that could we, happen. We were told that it was a separate entity through the state anyway, so. And it, it's run through state office over there in the industrial park. Uh, no, I'm talking about the, the COG itself. No, I know that, yeah. but I mean the retirement board. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yes. all on the state level, so. Um, no. no, so it's no. the county. It's the old They're overseen by the state. They're overseen uh, by the state. Okay. Yeah. So, so <coughs> they might have some say in it, but I'm not, I'm not sure. So, mm. so I can't okay. provide yeah. any answers on that. Yeah, we, we never really got an update until since they defunct. Yeah. And I don't said it. <laughs> so if you no do there. hear of anything, if you could just kind of keep us in the loop, mm. trying to stay as much in the loop as we can. But right. Right. Um, now, in terms of your net OPEP liability, which is the number underneath your net pension liability, that was just under $7 million at the end of 2018. That increased from $5.2 million in, two, the, in 2017. Um, the main reason for that change was due to a new accounting standard that was issued and the town was required to implement um, GASB statement number 75. Um, in prior years, or prior to 2018, the town was allowed to obtain an actuarial evaluation to determine what the um, your OPEB or your other post-employment benefit liability was, amortize it over 30 years, and book a little bit each year. So between 2010 and 2017, that liability grew a little bit each year because you were only booking a portion of it. In 2018, the town was required to book the entire liability um, based on this new standard. So typically what we saw uh, in other cities and towns was that liability increased dramatically. So it was a <coughs> portion of it and not just the entire thing. However, um, the town of Hadley did not increase as much. As you can see, it went from 5.2 to, or um, sorry, 5.2 to 6.9. So that's not really a huge increase. Um, and the reason for that is because the town is fairly aggressively funding your, um, your OPEB trust fund. Um, so at the end of 2018, there was about $1.1 million in that, in that fund, which is fairly significant given the size of your OPEB liability. So because of that, you, you didn't see a dramatic increase like we saw in most other places. So one of the reasons I think uh, your bond rating is upgraded mm -hmm. as well. 
Um, they specifically stated that in the in the um, article. So, um, so that's good news. Um, you know, as of this point in time, there's no requirement to fund that liability, but you know, you do have a policy, and you are putting in a, a fairly significant amount into that fund every year. So, what's the good work on that? Yeah. Yeah. Let it work out. Yeah. Yeah. Let it work out. Um, so that's all I was going to touch on in the financial statements, unless anyone had any other questions or concerns. Well, we're just very yeah. happy with our financial team and everybody yeah. that's done a good job. Yeah. I mean, you. You know, we're looking back at, back at 18 at this point in time. We have a very healthy balance in your stabilization fund um, at the end of 2018. And as well, so that's um, it's also very good. You guys do make a concerted effort to put money into to both of those um, funds every year, which is great. So, so you're going to be helping us out with the FY19 audit, and you've already asked for some information. We have some tentative uh, field dates, yep. and, and so we'll be working on that. And Just like a perpetual audit. <laughs> <laughs> Never ending. Never ending. Uh, you know, one of the problems that we um, run into each year is if we try to get in here early to do the audit, um, we have to wait for the audit of the Hampshire County Retirement System, and that's uh, traditionally come out in the end of January-ish mm -hmm. time frame. So we can do a whole bunch of stuff, but we can't finish the audit until we get those numbers because they, they flow into to our statements themselves. So. We'll try to get it done early this year, but I'm not sure the status of the, the audit of the retirement system at this point in time. So. We appreciate the work that you do, but particularly since we're on a tight time schedule with the big borrowing, the audit needed to be done for that. So I know that we were asking you to work faster than <laughs> perhaps you were prepared to. That's so. right. If I work as fast as we can, it makes it most efficient for everyone at that point yeah. in time. Too. Mm -hmm. so. Did anyone want to talk about the management letter or? I was just actually just going to ask. I know it, good news is it was kind of short and sweet. It was short, but yep. Mm -hmm. A couple of school related items. Um, yeah, there was one issue related to kind of a budget transfer, and it did relate to the school in terms of um, the education grouping itself mm -hmm. was overextended by like $260,000 at the end of the year. Because um, traditionally, if they, they look at their balance at the end of the year and move um, expenses choice. into the school choice fund. I mean, that's just kind of been their process. But there was a breakdown in communication at some point there, and that transfer got made um, by the school department in their records, but it didn't get made in the, the town's records, which are really the ones that count in the at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, just recommend, you know, more timely, better communication on everyone's um, involved in that process um, and then we had an issue um, we as part of the audit we tie out the the revenue and expense budgets to the tax recap and your your budget votes um, at your town meetings and you know we had an issue tying out the revenue budget um, that was reported in the general ledger which you would theoretically use to track how you're doing on a revenue or a budget or sexual basis <coughs> those numbers <coughs> agreed to the what was voted and what was in the recap so my guess is preliminary numbers got put in there as budget numbers, and they never got updated to what the final ones were. But you know, there should be some kind of process in place to reconcile mm -hmm. that. Make sure you actually have the right budgeted numbers in the system, so you're you're tracking properly. Right? Mm -hmm. um, the other um, current year comment was had to do with student activity funds, and you know, the requirement that um, the state has for those to be audited. Um, they are required to be audited externally every three years, and then in and the in between years, they can be audited internally. Mm -hmm. But you're supposed to follow DESE's guidelines for their audit. Um, so it's not just a matter of you can do whatever you want to do in those in between years. You're actually supposed to do the audit in accordance with the guidelines. Um, so the last audit that was done was as of 6 30 15. Um, so it's kind of off schedule. There is nothing really done in the in between years, um, and you're overdue for an external audit. So. That was um, that's that comment. And do you know has that been followed, scheduled? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. 
I can reach out to Chris. Um, yeah. We just finished his end of year report on it. So. Linda, do you know? Uh, an external audit? I, I'm, I'm not aware. We've, we've talked about what we're going to do internally, but mm -hmm. I, I wasn't aware that we needed a. When we talk to Chris on Friday, right. we'll bring that up. Okay. okay. And I have, um, we have template work papers mm -hmm. and things we can follow for doing your own internal audit. Um, so I can send those to you. Yes, please. Well. Thank you. Okay. Great. Um, and then the last um, new comment for this year was just an informational only comment. There's a couple new accounting standards that are coming down the road. There's always new accounting standards. Um, so we just will work with you guys on what needs to be done to, to implement those. I don't think it's going to be much in terms of what you need to do from the town side, but just an FYI. Mm -hmm. And then the comment that we repeated from the prior year had to do with um, reconciling the grant accounts between the school and the and the town, because the school keeps their own records for tracking the grants in the town <coughs> as a general ledger, and there there's some disagreement there in terms of you know what needs what the balances are. So it needs to be a better process in place for that. There wasn't there are not huge differences, but clearly there there needs to be some improvements there. So it could be. All right. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. So yeah. Much. Thank you very much. Right, great. Have a great night. Enjoy the rest of the summer. Yeah. Yeah. I know. And the hundred plus degrees. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, we all wished it here. It is. I know. Yeah. 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 Wait all year, right? All right. Have a good night. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Um, move on to see Suzanne is here, so we can move on to uh, Suzanne, our senior service uh, director, has submitted her resignation <coughs> effective September 9th, two thousand. 19. Um, oh, mine says September 9th. 2019? Is it in the, is it different it in the letter? Six in the oh, letter. I'm sorry. I was looking at just the, anyway, uh, September, September 6, 2019. Uh, I apologize. My, my mistake. Um, but Suzanne, I'm sorry to see you go. I don't know if you'd like to make any kind of statement here tonight or. I would, yeah. actually. Um, well, let's put our priorities in order. Congratulations on your AAA <laughs> rating, because I know that's really key for everything happening in Hadley. Um, I've seen a lot of changes in Hadley in six years, um, and they're good ones. Um, so you should all be congratulated on the, the way that you are investing in the infrastructure for the people that live here. It'll go a long way for a long time. Um, and I think there's lessons that were learned along the way, um, such as you know taking care of those investments that'll serve everyone. Um, that was no small thing on all counts. Um, I appreciate everyone's support in making these <coughs> things that needed to happen happen. Uh, it wasn't an uh, you know entirely smooth and easy road, um, but it's happened nonetheless. Um, we've seen significant growth in the senior center. Um, we're in a really terrific place, which is why um, I'm taking this time instead of doing it, say, two years ago, um, to say um, that I'd like to spend more time with my family. Please don't take it personally. Um, you have and this is the part I'm going to miss the most, I think. A tremendous um, staff working for you for the town of Hadley. I'm going to miss them. I worked collaboratively under the radar that in ways that you probably don't know with most of these department heads and their people. They're dedicated. <coughs> they know what they're doing. They're hardworking. And most of all, they have integrity. Um, I will miss that. That's hard to find in a collaborative group of people. And because of that, we got so much more done than we could have on our own. Um, I'm also thankful to the community for um, their feedback and then after I make the giant leap and put myself out there, they stand up and back it up so that you know 
that's what they want. Um, I think that's, I think the world would work a little better if we saw that more often. Um, the Senior Center has, um, in, since I've gotten there, six years ago, July 15th was six years, um, has um, grown in membership, in the culture being more of a um, <coughs> participant-owned kind of community. And um, they feel as though they have a say in what and how things happen there. Um, which is really important to want to be able to go to a place that might be a hard first step for some people. Um, there's more programs than there ever were before. Um, Violet and Lauren um, are, they're going to be the mainstays um, for keeping the ball rolling along with our core set of volunteers who um, have grown over the years and really, really helped to keep continuity and allow all the other professionals to do the jobs that they were hired to do. So it's not just like this little, you know, oh, I don't want to go to the senior center. There's all old people there. It's this really vibrant, interactive, um, collaborative, caring, place and it's amazing to be a part of it it really is it's amazing I've grown to love the people I work with and I can't say that that's always been the case in my professional history um, <coughs> we've managed to get the senior tax work off program going um, I hope that more people apply for that we have five slots we only had two people take advantage of that this year I think, if I'm not assuming, it was a huge help yes. having those people here, and it meant a lot to them. Um, they enjoyed their time here from the feedback that I got, and it's a win-win situation. So that was key, um, and I think you're going to see that across Massachusetts as time rolls on. Um, the new building will bring people in that couldn't access the building before and make them want to stay for other things other than a shine appointment to get their Medicare enrollment. Um, and, you know, now that we have the new van, there is, um, I have put in a grant with PVTA who would love to get rid of Dial-A-Ride. Um, to match what we are willing to do in our budget for them to give us the money to run the van five days a week, five hours a day, to get people to medical appointments, to the pharmacy, to do their shopping, to come to the senior center, all the rest of these things. Um, that grant should be coming back um, in October from PVTA to let us know, and will be <coughs> effective January 1st. Of course, I will be leaving all of this in written form with contact information. Um, we are in the process of hiring drivers to start at 12 hours a week um, as soon as possible. I anticipate that driver coming in hopefully by next week. Um, we're in a good place. We're, in a, we're, we're able to give more services, more caring and more peer support and social engagement than we ever have been, been before. So I want to thank you all for helping to make that happen. Thank you. Yeah. Um, there was no, just to clarify, there was no incident or anything else uh, with the building or our personnel or anything like that that preempted this decision. Simply a, a wanting to um, not be thinking of work 300, you know, 365 days a year and spend some time with my family. I, not planned what I'm going to do after this, but I'm very grateful for everything that I've learned and for the opportunity to work with everybody I've had. Thank you, Suzanne. Like I say, we're going to miss you and you've done a great job implementing all those programs and just the work you've done on the building project and 
your commitment to all of it has been so great to work with you. So I know I'm going to miss you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I was on the original committee when we hired you. Were you? We yeah. were talking about that. <laughs> Who was on that committee? Uh, and it's never been a regret that you've taken, you had taken that job. Thank you. So you've done a lot for our seniors. We appreciate mm -hmm. it. Wish you the best. Thank you so yeah. much. Yeah. Same here. All right. Uh, we could do the senior center building. You yeah, yeah. Let's do the senior center building. We've got a few minutes, and we can I can kick off the senior center um, project. Do you guys want to give an update, and I can do the PCO stuff? Sure. Do you have anything? Go ahead. Okay. Um, well, I haven't been. I've been stopping watching YouTube videos. <laughs> so, um, uh, I'm not sure where you left off, but, um, so we're waiting on ACT to start work on the um, removal of the um, um, material, the unsuitable materials down by the end of the Middle Street entrance that will um, go for, uh, from the stormwater drainage system into the um, catch basin there. Um, that should be happening hopefully within a week or two. In the meantime, um, they're finishing doing all the um, backfill up against finish work on the landscape, not landscaping, but foundation. excavating and foundation. Um, and then they're going to start laying the stormwater um, from system. system from the east side down um, so that we don't lose time and have to add time on to the end of the contract, um, which may or may not happen depending on how it goes with the, you know, the unsuitable removal and, and ACT. Um, so water is in, um, they are laying electrical now, um, then they will be backfilling that with gravel and then the um, <coughs> cement foundation will be going in. Um, so slab. slab um, over all of the utilities that are underground. Um, there is um, time-lapse photography happening to document the process, thanks to um, John. John he's right over <laughs> thanks to John, um, who has a great camera and has put one on the Goodwin and um, on a pool um, between the Legion and the new building. And so there will be a record of that moving forward. Um, so once we get these glitches taken care of and the stormwater uh, system is laid, we will officially, and the slab cord will officially be out of the ground, which is the biggest, oh my God, let's hope nothing else goes wrong. From there, you're frameworking and all the rest of that. So my guess is by the time I'm done, um, which is September 6th, will be past that phase, which we're all saying our prayers for. Uh, well, the steel is going up next week. We have a few steel structures for the higher parts of the roof, and framing start, yep. so you will start to see a building mm -hmm. materializing. Yep. It's very exciting. Mm -hmm. Exciting. <coughs> Um, and we have uh, just a few change orders we need to vote on tonight. Uh, the first one is one I brought up before. It's on-site soils not meeting compaction test requirements at foundation backfilling. Um, basically, the native soil couldn't be used around the foundation. It wasn't meeting compaction standards, so we had to bring that in, you know, material from off-site to fill that in. Um, it was something that was in the contract documentation, but priced out on a per yard basis or however they do it. That change order, PCO 004, was for $22,610. Then we have another PCO, number five, uh, change in scope from material for the water main tie-in. This is also one we talked about before. Um, it's $9,600.55, and that one is because in the contract documentation, we were going to do a live tap into the water line, but instead we had to shut down the water service on Route 9, cut into the pipe, 
put a T in and go from there. So just a different method of tying into that water main. And that was something that was basically not mandated, but it was, you know, the water department asked us to do that when we actually went to tie into it. Um, and I thought I had one more. Let me just see what our main time. Yeah, and then just uh, we had one in the meantime that was a relocate grease trap vent. And that was, we covered that in our meeting because that was only $1,219.57. But that was just a, a detail for the grease trap in there. We have the unsuitables in the the drain line. They I think we were waiting on that one. We voted last week. We voted last week for I thought Phil said to wait on that. Yes? No? Can we vote on oh, that Oh, no. I don't think we're waiting on that. No, <coughs> the drain line? On the, the Legion no. lot one? No, not the Legion lot. The one, the drain line with the asbestos. Yeah, we voted on it last week. Didn't we? Oh, didn't I? Oh, no, okay, yeah. yeah Removal of a, week. yes, we did that last week. Okay. Yes, okay, I'm sorry, yeah. Okay, so, <laughs> so just the two, four and five, I think are the two we had to vote on tonight. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. We need to have a discussion about the Legion parking lot in preparation for the mm -hmm. tar. I don't know how far you guys are into it, but. Yeah, uh, there's a group of us discussing that right uh, now. Um, be happy to tie you in some with that yeah. too. Um, and one other thing I was just going to mention when we get into the library is we are removing these unsuitable materials. Mm -hmm. okay. We do have to send them to a test pit and then send it in for testing. So we have like a few weeks where we're waiting for test pits and these things. Mm -hmm. If the library wants during this time, we have an opportunity to kind of combine efforts. Mm -hmm. If they want to do any test pits, I think your OPM has been notified by our okay. OPM, so to speak, yeah. one project Filling by the others. Yeah. Um, but that's a possibility and might help the overall cost of removing this material because we don't know where it goes to. Right, right. Um, and there, from drawings, there are library excavations close by to where we mm -hmm. found this material. So yeah. just to give you that update. Okay, yeah, I'll um, email Allison and make sure that that communication is happening. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know if you have anything else in the library. Yeah, I mean, the library basically, um, yeah, it's about, so the first order of business is going to be the demolition of the Booker School. Mm -hmm. um, so there's in the kind of testing and discovery phase right now um, in anticipation of that building coming down. So dealing with asbestos and yeah. all sorts of fun stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Do we have a guesstimate for when that will happen? I know it depends on the asbestos, but... Yeah, I I don't. Yeah, yes. I don't have an extra date. Uh, what I heard is, is that they're already doing the asbestos abatement and it'll take about three weeks for that to happen. I think they're already almost two weeks in. Okay. Yeah. They're over there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah they're over there now. Yeah. Associated Wreckers. But that's basically what's holding up the demolition. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Fire substation. Mm -hmm. um, no meetings this week, and there's no financial thing or anything needing to be done. They've mowed the lawn, uh, grass up there. They put an area with the silt and things out that they need for runoff and things like that. So um, they're in the process of now of obtaining all the permits that we need from conservation and so forth. And then that should be moving along within the next few weeks to start. Construction fences up as of today. Yes. So. Yeah. Oh, is that? So they're starting. Great. <coughs> All right. 745 appointment here for Kestrel Trust, Mount Holyoke Grange project. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Um, Brendan Paulette is here from the CONCOM to join me. So I oh, thank you. Maps pass this around while we're talking. Um, so to orient you, this is about the uh, landscape partnership grant that Hadley supported. Um, to the select board and the Conservation Commission. Um, as you know, we received the grant from the state. Uh, it was in two parts. The first uh, acquisition was completed as of June 30th. Um, so that was a parcel on Chamar Road that will be uh, part of the state park in addition. Uh, 
so we're now into our fiscal year 2020, and one of the projects that we uh, hope will come to fruition is the conservation restriction over the town of Hadley's uh, municipal watershed lands, um, as we've discussed. And so tonight, I really just wanted to um, outline a process that, that the select board would support uh, to, to finalize the details that are needed for that process because there are a lot of details. Uh, so normally, uh, if, it's, if it's land under the care and control of the Conservation Commission and it's a CPA-funded project, and um, I'm not sure how many times we've done this in Hadley, but in other towns, um, Kestrel Land Trust will just simply work with the Conservation Commission directly on the terms of the conservation restriction, and that will be reviewed by the town's attorney and then um, the select board and the cons com sign off on it. It goes to the state, state signs off on it, and then it's recorded. Um, so in this case, the land is water supply land. Um, so I wanted to ask if you wanted to delegate that to the Conservation Commission, that would be uh, a, a reasonable step if you wanted to take that. How does the Conservation Commission feel about that? Um, we don't have an issue with it. We've already looked at the CR preliminarily and we had some comments little feedback on it um, specifically about access issues and relocating trails if they need to be things like that so yeah we haven't had any issues with it well, like a comment I'll make is that uh, when we had discussed with Paul earlier in the year I think there was going to be at least someone from the select board and I thought there was at least some member of the community uh, providing feedback on the, the conservation restriction. So, and that's fine. Yeah. If that's how you'd like to go. I think yeah. um, in order to, so I'm here in Paul's stead. Yeah. If you don't know me, I'm, I'm the director yep. at Kristen DeBoer. Um, so Paul's on vacation right now. But the uh, the now that we're in July, so we have we have until at the very latest June 30th of 2020 to finalize this whole project. Mm -hmm. Um, but because the conservation restriction um, on the Hadley lands acts as match to leverage protection of other lands, so our intent is to protect about 700 acres, mm -hmm. we'd like to get the Hadley portion done sooner than later, much sooner than later if possible, mm -hmm. in 2019, ideally by December, so that we can then finish the projects that we're actually paying for in the following year, if that makes sense. Um, so I think it would, it would be uh, good timing to, to identify a person from the select board, to work with the CONCOM and Kestrel Land Trust, and if there's another member of the community um, to add to that group. Yeah, I know there are some interests from the forestry, uh, some, you know, forest management plan there, possibly mountain biking mm -hmm. uh, and hunting as well was mm -hmm. uh, contingent. That well, we've already allowed the bike people to do the trails and groom them yeah with that up there so we've already said yes to that uh, I think mm -hmm. you were aware of that correct yes mm -hmm. so as, as a process because I know Paul had us put something or wasn't there something that had to be for a fall town meeting on the warrant in order to make the process move along or what, what yes was so that's the other mm -hmm. component of this um, <coughs> so because the state has determined that this land is um, protected at a minimal level under Article 97. Um, we actually need a vote of the legislature, don't panic, it's not as bad as it sounds, uh, to increase protections and to allow for public access. Those are the two components. Um, I've had a meeting with uh, Senator Cumberford and she's more than willing to bring that forward. Um, it's a, it's a, a very well, relatively simple matter, as so long as the town supports the effort. Um, these are usually grouped together with other Article 97 modifications throughout the municipalities. So basically, special town meetings just to modify our Article 97 protections, so that way the state can vote on it, and then we can move forward with. Correct. And I am double checking with some attorneys as to whether, whether or not the town, what form the town meeting vote would need to, to take place, and how that looks. So. I, and I don't have that precise detail right now, but I think we should plan for it. And David, that's something we can put on the uh, town meeting agenda? Yeah, okay. I'm looking for my draft uh, special town meeting warrant. Uh, 
going to write a placeholder as soon as I find it. Yeah, just so you don't have to like, create a separate petition or something like that to put no, it on the warrant. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, and that would be nice. Do you know if we'd have to lift the Article 97 and put this on, or it's just, no, a, modification? It's just a modification? Okay, okay. Yeah. So and Article 97 will stand, but yeah. this will be an increase of protection. I just want to make sure we don't have to have like two articles, like one to remove it, one to do something different. Mm -hmm. you I don't know? think so. We'll okay. get you the precise language. Yeah. Um, and I'd yeah. like to nominate. Uh, David Phil to be the select board representative on this process. Can I second? I can second. <laughs> and oh well, all those in favor of that? Right. Aye. 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 Is that right, David? <laughs> you accept. <laughs> See, I John sounds comment. sad. Now. <laughs> John, would John like to do? No, no, I, how about I, if John would like to be the alternate? If absolutely you're not, 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 because I'm still against this. Uh, oh. Article 97 has a lot of restrictions on it right now, oh. which I've been reading up on, and I don't think it's a good move for the town of Hadley. So you'll stay in close contact with your <laughs> yeah. fellow select board representative. Yeah. <laughs> All complaints directed. <laughs> Concerns. Let's put it like concerns. That. Yeah. Concerns. And so, can yeah, we no. make an announcement? Um, ask if there's what do we want? One person from the community, or two, or how, how do we want to do it so we can get it going? I mean, maybe you know, depending on what kind of interest there is, we could have a, a few people, but hopefully, at least one person steps up and has a say. Uh, I can I can mention it to like the guys at Valley Bike or something and okay. see if anyone from like the mountain biking community would be interested so can I put a, it on, a resident but yeah yes yeah, a resident yeah yeah can we, david can we put it on hadley media put an announcement for um john john uh, i'll type it and else. give it to yeah. him <laughs> okay. i got it he has okay. the headphones he doesn't yeah, yeah. Time. yeah. It's I not want a delay. you to put something on <laughs> about the having a member, but Je uh, Jennifer will get it. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Good answer. Um, and, sure. and just to be clear, I think all the things that the town had asked for in the initial discussion uh, you know, to allow for hunting, to allow for forestry, <coughs> you know, those are very easily put in there and are ready in the draft. So I, you know, it may be a, a fairly swift process. Okay. Yeah, he, Paul had sent over. Uh, draft language and I think there was at least I didn't see any major concerns with it so I think it should mm -hmm. as long as we get the input that there's no other stuff I think it should be fairly easy okay, yeah great so maybe we could plan for um, uh, I'll plan for Paul to circle back uh, in August and then in September and if we can finalize it before the October town meeting that would be ideal okay. Okay. that work for you sure all right okay. <laughs> Paul it's very good <laughs> well, we, we just we already looked at it once and yeah. we looked at for biking, for hunting, yeah. for access, you know, the trail maintenance, things like that. Those are all things that the commission looked at. Snow forestry land Snow management. Snowmobiles is another big issue. Snowmobiles, right. well, that was brought up at Conscom. We didn't have an issue with it. So. I'm not trying to step on the conservation. Oh, no. Those by no. Any means, so. <coughs> we, we promised the, the people that showed up that needed yeah. it. We would oh, yeah. 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 We, we have so, no yeah. issue with that. Okay. All right. Not They're enough. a very friendly committee to sit with. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody ever comes to see us. <laughs> <laughs> They're lonely. They need people. There's not enough hours in the day. No. Yeah. Um, yeah. Very good. So that sounds like it could be a simple process, which Paul will step back into and orchestrate. Um, uh, so regarding uh, a communication with Senator Comerford, um, would it be possible to just have a letter on town letterhead stating the town support? For the Article 97 modification. Do we yeah. Have a town meeting vote okay. before we do that? Sec. Can we do that in advance of town meeting? David? We yep. couldn't. We, we, we can, I don't think I we don't can have her can petition. We do a letter? Yeah, we, yeah. So we don't have to wait for town meeting? Um, you can indicate your support as uh, the select board for uh, this conservation restriction mm -hmm. as it relates to Article 97. Uh, has to go to town. Has to have subject to There's no reason yeah. why you can't express your support. Is that what you're looking for? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I think if yeah. I'll an make an official communication that I can support. share with her. Okay. Um, I'll second it. Yeah, and she did. You know, th this is all the first time we've all done this, so we're we're <coughs> looking for the guidance through, but. Um, 
we're double checking about the town meeting requirement because mm -hmm. I, I don't know if that is absolutely necessary. necessary. So we will get back to you on that. Okay. But for now, a placeholder on the October warrant would be great. Okay. So we have a motion and a second to uh, generate a letter showing our support of this project to lifting of the uh, Senator Comerford. Article 97. Yeah. yeah, but not necessarily binding. We need a right. town meeting vote. So, uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 No. All right. Anything else? Thank or you. Else? Uh, Thank you, Kristen. Thank yeah. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, let's uh, jump into our compensation classification plan update. Mr. Jacobs, thank you for coming. Yeah, it's a pleasure to be here again. We have a lot of documents here, so just summarize them. Summarize them. In like well, two have, minutes. Two minutes, well, one minute. <laughs> you have a plan in front of you, um, and I think we've talked about it before. Yeah. Uh, the classification plan basically uh, has been developed to reflect different levels of responsibility within the organization. Uh, I mentioned earlier that uh, last time we met, uh, my recommendation is to have a separate plan for police and fire, uh, and then one for general government to give the town flexibility relative to dealing with really unique compensation issues in each of those three areas, general government, police, and fire. Mm -hmm. And the grade level structures you see in each of the plans mirrors the organizational structure within departments in those three groups. Um, you now have seen how I've recommended using market data to develop a salary range, mm -hmm. the structure for each of the corresponding grade levels uh, in a manner that basically allows you to maintain your salary ranges competitively with the marketplace um, so that we always describe this type of compensation plan as quote unquote market driven. Um, that's the basic structure, that is the plan. As I said the last time I was here, I wanted an opportunity to go back and talk um, with your department heads and David and I met with them yesterday mm -hmm. and we had a chance to present the whole plan to them, give them an opportunity to ask any questions or express any concerns. They all seem to be very comfortable understanding the process that was used to develop each of the three plans. And I think that's very, very important. Mm -hmm. um, the um, <clears throat> other issue we talked about, of course, now was as it relates to based on this plan, then how to pay a new employee to re recruit and then also secondly to retain an employee. And we kicked around, um, a lot of them brought up different issues, concerns, and I think and David, I'm sure, will, will highlight it as well. Uh, the end result there is I think they're very open as a group, and I'm talking about your department heads, um, to the idea of being compensated based on what they accomplish. Uh, I always like to emphasize that word as opposed to merit. Um, I think there was a strong, you know, there was a lot of interest and a lot of discussion about that concept, in addition to other concepts as well. So to sum it all up in a nutshell, um, a lot of different ideas were ta talked about with regard to how to pay employees. Um, we didn't talk about dollars and cents, we talked about process mm -hmm. um, and how to do this consistently and how to uh, do it in a way that they felt comfortable, frankly, meaning they understood. Uh, and I think it's fair to say we talked about a whole range of different possibilities. <coughs> so really where, we're, where I think you're at is based on the plan you have now presented to you, uh, and along with that of course comes job descriptions and uh, I think I'd be remiss if I didn't also re-emphasize, as I have before, with that plan, I'm also suggesting or recommending to the board that you approve a set of administrative policies that do much, nothing more than describe how the plan was developed. So that in doing so, really, uh, my intention there is to enable you to establish a document which essentially says how positions and then secondly, employees will be compensated and also assigns responsibility in terms of how the process will be maintained, particularly in light of the fact that you're about to undertake a process to bring in an HR person. Now's a good time, <coughs> frankly, to look at this both from a policy standpoint as well as an administrative standpoint. Mm -hmm. So I think, and, and David, feel free obviously to jump in and give your perspective, but um, I think we're at a point where we're really looking for a direction from the board relative to proceeding ahead with developing a plan with regard to compensating employees within the structure that you see now uh, presented to you. So Mr. Jacobs has presented to the town and developed for the town a uh, very elegant and flexible uh, compensation um, process. proposal. Right, so 
Uh, it's market driven. It uh, now talks about uh, uh, other ways of looking at uh, departments and employees from a merit based per perspective rather than a longevity perspective. Uh, and I think uh, um, if that is comfortable to you, then Mr. Jacobs and I can put together the final document for the town. Can I ask, we, because we have two department heads in the room? Go ahead, Yeah. <laughs> so I just want to validate, I, I mean, I, conceptually I'm very comfortable with, with what Mr. Jacobs is, is proposing to us. Um, but, you know, again, the, the, as department heads, I, I just want to make sure, you know, you sounded like it, it was, um, a, there was a lot of participation in the meeting and, and mm -hmm. you're characterizing it and it sounds like generally people were agreeing that this process made sense to them. Can, I just want to make sure that Chris and Linda, you know, you feel the same way, or did you have concerns, or is there any, any reason that you would caution us against moving in this direction? It, in, in my opinion, no. The only concern, or I don't know if it's a concern, we, I got it from the meeting, was um, we, we felt that um, a piece was missing, and that piece was the board, those who make the final decision. And that's what Mr. Jacobs thought that, that the board should uh, come up with a policy and some administrative methods. But in terms of the document, it looks, it's a good document. Okay. Linda? I, um, yes, I thought it was, uh, it was very well received yesterday. I think there was, a, there was a lot of participation and some ideas about how things could be done differently. Um, and uh, it probably the biggest change is uh, Christian's right, it is the cons uh, how the select board approaches it because as you give your order, your, your instructions at the beginning of each budget season, you say there will be steps, there will be not, not be steps, there will be a COLA and this amount, and what you're giving is a, a flat um, across the board direction right. of how to budget your department. Mm -hmm. And I think there, I think if it says accurate, um, Mr. Jacobs, this is going to be more that uh, it's a little more more individualized, I right. I guess, a way of how it is going to be done, mm -hmm. and he constantly said within the appropriation, and so I think that's a that is going to be something that you have to work out. Mm -hmm. What's the appropriation? What you might appropriate for the DPW or larger department right. for their salaries to be allocated in a certain way would be a different way than you could treat. <coughs> Treasurer's one and two yeah. member yeah. departments, which mm -hmm. is what we have in town hall. Mm -hmm. So it's really going to affect um, how we do our budgets and at what point in the process dealing with the compensation happens. So I, I think a lot of the work is really from the select boards. Mm -hmm. Well, because the, the, you know, in my understanding, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that this was the, it was the first or the second step in the process, I guess the second, because the first one, you know, we're the, looking at the job descriptions and everything, but mm -hmm. um, coming up with a process to go forward. So from this point forward, we would be adopting a new practice in how we handle compensation, which is separate from the other issue of then we have what are people being paid today and what perhaps should they be paid you know, kind of that gap analysis, I call it. Uh, mm -hmm. Do we have any <coughs> outliers in that? And that's a whole separate discussion. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. So we're just talking about adopting a process, a protocol, a methodology that's very different but better than what we have today. Well, that's right. And again, as I've indicated before, the intent was to establish a process to pay positions based on responsibility, not primarily market data. Mm -hmm. We're using the market data basically to help us define that we're competitive. Mm -hmm. um, in talking to your department heads, the nature of compensation relative to paying employees, particularly those that are required to plan what to do and how to do it, mm -hmm. which is really what a department head is required mm -hmm. to do. That's really what we talked a lot about yesterday. Um, it does reflect individually, as Linda indicated, what one department does is not necessarily the same as another department. 
Um, and we talked about different aspects of compensation. Cost of living is a concept you know, that's been used here, years of service has been used. Um, we talked about, as I said, accomplishment or merit as a concept. Uh, and we talked about different ways to structure competitiveness uh, by using the survey average midpoint the way we've done to develop the ranges and specifically the survey midpoint now becomes a benchmark for you to measure whether people are being paid competitively or not. You'll now know and when you go to fill a vacancy for example you'll have a, a benchmark market standard to follow to help guide you relative to how to pay a new employee but then also how to retain current employees. So one of the things we talked about uh, and I show them and they can see for themselves where they are within each of the respective ranges whether they're above or below the benchmark mm -hmm. whether they're competitively being paid today or not um, that's a possible criteria that we could use so that everyone wouldn't get the same percentage increase right. for example and we talked about that um, as one aspect of compensation um, but again everything is within the structure and it's all subject to what the town can afford really what we discussed was different ways to spend that money Mm -hmm. Once and to do so consistently so people feel comfortable um, knowing what the criteria are that they uh, all can agree to. Uh, again, once again, as a process uh, so that they feel comfortable knowing uh, how they're going to be paid mm -hmm. is what it really boils down to. But again, I think it's important to be able to think a little bit outside of the box in the sense of recognizing one group of employees as exempt, not eligible for overtime, required to plan what to do and another group of employees that are non-exempt. And you've done that in the past. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you've had two different plans, exempt and non-exempt. Mm -hmm. So we're really kind of set following what you've already been doing in a sense, just incorporating that into one plan. Mm -hmm. You know, the idea of exempt versus non-exempt. Uh, but I think the most important thing from me, myself personally, was to hear from them as to how they felt about being paid based on really what they're already doing, you know, based on what they're accomplishing. And they were very open to that. Uh, and, and I think really what I'm trying to convey to the board, uh, that, that's a very positive step. Uh, I think if they're receptive to that, it's a question of coming back to you with a specific plan or a process again so that you're comfortable as they will be in terms of how it's going to be done going forward and to do so in a timely way. Right. Um, I think from my point of view, I would like to have a plan back to you certainly within a month at the most uh, before the end of the summer so that you have plenty of opportunity to review it and, and decide exactly how you want to move forward. Yeah, I think that would be great. And one thing I'm just getting from what we're talking about now is, you know, there's one level of us implementing this plan on our level mm -hmm. to people, you know, grade level, the higher grade levels, right? That would be direct reports yep. to us versus mm -hmm. department heads being able to implement a similar procedure right. for, the for staff. their staff. So, mm -hmm. yeah, so a good example, you use years of service. Finding that. You know, another year of service in the position, at least in terms of a structure, as a concept to pay somebody X amount of dollars more money. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a viable way to do it. I mean, everybody knows someone's been here another year. The question is how much or what's the best way to spend, again, that money to recognize year, a year of service as having some value associated with it. Mm -hmm. uh, but the most important thing, at least I, I came away from yesterday, was uh, the, the group that we met with was very receptive to uh, exploring all different ways to do it so and very much involving them in that aspect of it but ultimately through David coming back to you with a, a plan for you to review and hopefully approve. You know it depends how, who, who and where we're going to hire for HR person too and may have a lot of input on this. You know? Yep. That's well, right. This is, That's right. they'd be walking right into this mm -hmm. you know so. Right. Okay. Great. So that's yes. the plan. Again, through David, we would move forward with developing a, mm -hmm. a process to pay employees both exempt and not exempt uh, and bring that back to you uh, before the end of the summer. That sounds good. I'm in. Yeah. All right. Good. Thank you. Right. Thank you very much. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Okay. The last I item we have is <laughs> <there. Well, laughs> sewer operations and capital budget options. Um, my computer working, yes. So uh, I asked David to put together some of these options um, just so when we're thinking about the sewer enterprise fund and the financial position of that fund, what we can, what we can do. Um, one 
there's there's the options we've discussed of uh, you know taking on that sewer debt. There's been an option discussed of rerouting some CPA fund funding percentage that we take now, lowering that percentage and putting a percentage that lowered percentage towards sewer instead of towards CPA. And there are a lot of steps we'd have to go through to to do some of these suggestions. So I just asked David to put together a list of options for us. So really before we get into talking to CPA and all these things, we're really committing to all the things we'd have to do in order to execute that option. Because some of them are, I was, I was surprised at what we had to go through to make it happen. So I don't know, David, if you want to sure. explain it much better than I am babbling on here. Let me just walk you through the demo. Uh, first of all, is, uh, the estimated performance for FY 2019. Uh, I looked at my crystal ball and I came up with a uh, scenario where the sewer enterprise funds revenues were not keeping pace with the expenses and showing a deficit of projected deficit of $29,000 and change. This morning I did receive the actual numbers from the accountant and the picture is a little bit better than my crystal ball revealed. The sewer ended, ended up with a surplus of $22,120 for FY19. So we're not in a deficit situation, we're in a surplus situation, small surplus. Um, Revenues did not meet targets, and expenditures were light by about $80,000 because we did not engage in some of the consulting and engineering that um, we might have. And given that we switched DPW directors in mid-year, that outcome is not surprising. Um, so we're not standing in a hole looking into FY20 but we recognize that we're standing perhaps on thin ice thinking about the coming fiscal years. So the options are five of them. Uh, increase the sewer rates as recommended by the time bond report. And by the, by the way, these options are not mutually exclusive, so we can have some sort of combination. To transfer sewer reserves to fund the projected to 2020 operational deficit, and I'm Looking at my crystal ball, I'm thinking about $150,000 would be necessary. We have sewer reserves at around $300,000, and we have the sewer impact fee fund at uh, $269,000 and change. Um, third option is that we can fund the sewer debt from the sewer impact fees or free cash. Um, we have additional $135,000 of capital items contained within the operational budget, which we could have also uh, fund through the sewer impact fee. Um, so this would require a town meeting vote. It would be a restatement of the funding for the enterprise fund in October. A fourth is a two-step process. This is real watchmaking. All the different parts have to work together in order for this to work. Reduce CPA by 1% and adopt a capital stabilization fund override of an equivalent amount. 1% of CPA is about $92,000. That would result in a savings to the taxpayers. And then uh, at the same time, we would adopt a new capital stabilization fund override of $92,000. So there'd be no net impact upon uh, taxpayers. Um, and then the fifth option is to transfer the sewer debt to tax rate. Um, we can transfer the select board without a town meeting vote can transfer the sewer debt from the enterprise fund to the tax rate. So long as the transfer reduces sewer rates or avoids a sewer rate increase. Um, and this would require that we would have to explain fully to the ratepayers and taxpayers what we're trying to do because we initially sold the sewer debt on the premise that the sewer rate payers would be paying for it. Now we'd be transferring it over to the tax, 
tax rates, so we would have to make sure that people understood and were comfortable with that action. No, I ain't comfortable with that action at all. I think we had talked about it at our last meeting that the best option I thought that we thought would be the 1% reduction of the CPA funds. Yeah, I thought it was that and then also paying, I think, the 130000 for the 2020 um, debt as a one-time payment to kind of build up the enterprise fund again. For free. Cash. Wait, and we had also talked about the possibility of, but again, not just the possibility of using the, the town stabilization account, too, for a possible one-time injection and I don't see this on your list because I know yeah. you really don't like even five thousand dollars you get upset when we try to touch stabilization <laughs> <laughs> it's it's not there but I'm willing to uh, <coughs> say that uh, that would be subsumed into option number three so that's so you know, free cash or sewer impact fees or sewer reserves Is for stabilization Chris? do this with me did, did you work on this list with David or no no he, uh, okay. he gave me the list Okay. But but the, you're right, the, the bodies are, these are the things that we discussed last time. Yeah. The, the only thing I see about the CPA one is I see this being, if we, you know, try to do this, we have to go to town meeting and a ballot vote, and I'm just worried that it's, it's going to be contentious and has a, I would say, a medium chance of passing you know no, it could easily so. you don't think so I don't think so and and the reason I don't I, I understand and agree with your point about not relying on mm -hmm. that because it's too many steps but I would like to see us do it anyway because I think that I think that folks in town especially the people that go to town meeting mm -hmm. um, they've been hearing over and over again about our inab inability to really address a lot of the infrastructure issues mm -hmm. and have been I think frustrated that we haven't really had a good plan some of the CPA stuff and I don't mean to insult anybody but as David would put it we are getting into some fluffy bunny projects mm -hmm. and I think from the tax rate standpoint, if people are thinking about where they want to allocate their tax dollars, I think they'd be willing to give up that 1% for a net neutral for a net neutral position. We're not asking for an increase, knowing that it's staving off the potential for they a future tax increase. They would not want that to be onto their tax dollar again. I, but I see That's that. a no, big no. Yeah, I just yes. see that argument of, oh, well, then we're losing out of those matching funds. We still get matching funds for 2%. Yeah. For 2%. Yeah. yeah. But not the. But total we're not free. using. What's the amount I, I, that's I, left yeah. in CPA right now, <laughs> Linda? What's I in it? Uh, two, two, two point one million. Yeah, two point yeah, yeah. one. Exactly. No, I and I. And 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 any time, and I'm afraid, any time somebody goes for something, it's not a really positive uh, thing to get some money. Not all the time. To, to go ahead. I I think, and, and this might not be. You might want to do this anyways, but I just want to throw something else to think about with CPA. Besides both CPA and stabilization being part of why we looked good, because we were holding that money, but we're not, you know, we also know that CPA is for us to use and spend, unlike stabilization. Um, something that David Eisenthal mentioned as we were going, as uh, we were at our, one of our meetings one night, says, you know, you really could be doing so much more with your CPA, and he's talking about using it for, as seed money for some, uh, something larger, mm -hmm. uh, projects in town that would be really a great benefit to the town, and how, you know, this would be through, through using um, the money, it, using the money as the, uh, a down payment and doing some borrowing and having that paid out of the money that we take in each year. I, I think this is something we should, you know, Mayor, really, since we've got so much, we actually have two six with 500000 of unspent money. So we've got a lot of money in there. And before we part with it, just because we're not using it, while we've got it and before we, we, we pass on it, I think it's worth exploring if there are some things in there that we're missing. Um, and I know the CPA committee has, has worked harder, and I have not talked with them about this, and maybe they have explored it all, but it's just something that I just wanted to put out there as worth taking another look before we Did part with it. Did he any examples specifically of what oh, he, he, he was talking, um, no, go ahead. 
Mr. Chairman, <laughs> think uh, what the Treasurer is saying uh, is one of the things that I'll be talking with to the board tonight. Um, I spoke with the chair, with the chair of CPA last Friday, um, and I think uh, if the board permits us, we'll be coming, we'll be able to hopefully get some of that money. Um, for what? So for a big, big project, the um, the town commons I needs to be upgraded in my view. Um, so can't it's a historical location. Like there are a lot of things that need to be done in the commons. And so I've been thinking about it since I came on board, and um, one of the only places the board, in my view, be able to authorize us to will be getting funding from CPA. I spoke with the chair, telling him that, uh, discussing with him, and uh, I promised to get back to him after getting clearance from the board. Mm -hmm. uh, so he, he thinks it's a very good idea. And um, well, what do you want to do with the town common? Uh, we, right now, the common is missed uh, some fixing. Uh, the, the roads are not up to date. The field itself, uh, looking at history, they have not, for a while, we have not done any fertilization or green. The common as a center of town, uh, beautification is very important. Even as simple as putting a couple of benches uh, where people can come out, especially at this time of the year, it attracts people to, to, the, to the center. We also have all these big trees in the, on the green. They have not been maintained. Uh, as a true warden, uh, if I if I come to the board, the number of dollars to put to bring this to trim those trees are very expensive. So discussing with the CPA how to get funding, I said because I'll be discussing with the board today, and uh, I wanted to know from his take uh, if my thinking is correct, and he was very pleased with thinking. He said he's going on vacation this probably this Monday, and then when he gets back, I'm gonna have spoken with the board, and then uh, he would like to sit with me. So the treasurer's concept of putting some, using some of this money to do some better good, I think is a good thing. Um, my take is that the green needs a lot of, uh, I'm sorry, the common section mm -hmm. needs a lot of uh, update. Two years okay. ago, we asked for. Uh, water fountain in front of town hall to be hooked up and the water <laughs> and, the, and the water fountain over in a common to be hooked up uh, yeah. that wasn't done by the last dpw director so it's something we need to look into and if cpa could possibly yeah, fund it the water those flowers out there with the water fountain i yelled at you the other you morning were, wouldn't were, it be nice if that water fountain was working out there smart ones. <laughs> and i said get all right to the water so <laughs> John, so, so let's pull into the sewer here we were talking about that but uh so they, 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 they i get would like a three-pronged approach for now uh, option two oh, i'm sorry uh no. Option no. three. <laughs> no. Yeah. No. Not that. Uh, option three, which is um, 135, 555 um, out of free cash or something along those lines to pay for the 20, FY 2020 sewer debt. Uh, pursuing number four, which is the CPA, and I would sell this as a uh, temporary reduction. Um, until we can get the enterprise fund back on track. That's how I would explain it to taxpayers. Yeah, I would want that, that not to jump on you, but it's just, I would like to see that be, if we were to pursue it, be a finite thing. Yeah. We're going to do it for three years or whatever it might be and then revert right. back. Yeah. Yeah. That, I don't know okay. if that's possible, but having to do all this I think voting. Five year time frame would probably be enough to kind of get things on the right track there. Mm -hmm. um, and then at the same time, not completely deplete CPA, but uh, we can debate that. But um, mm -hmm. I, I just, yeah, I don't know. Um, as long then, as we're not taking any more surprise administration fees out of the water and sewer, <laughs> maybe we'd be able to stabilize it. <laughs> well, but what I would like to do is modify the wording on that. Um, uh, the, I'm sorry, number three, yeah. the 130,000, where it says from sewer impact fees or free cash. Oh, yeah, free it doesn't cash. make any sense no, to me to take it from impact fees no. because no. you're just yeah. swapping one problem for the other. But I would, 
be more than happy to change it to be free cash or stabilization because we don't know. Well, I you was going to suggest and stabilization as the third approach and, to it, mm -hmm. just to kind of. And your that. number five looks like a perfect non binding question. Do we take capital from water and sewer and take it out of taxation? I think at this point, I I think it's worth talking about. It's come up enough. Yeah, I mean, but I we, feel we've like explained it to people enough. Mm -hmm. I have a ton of people call me on it, and, and I explain Well, and you my get a ton points. of people on going going the other way too. Both with sides, people, yeah. yeah, you know. Yeah, but no, I, 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 but I would rather have um, mm -hmm. allow Chris more time to to work with David and and Linda really as well to really, you know crunch some numbers, look at it, and come back and see what it does for us because it is going to be politically charged, um, a conversation. It's going so to be I a think political decision either way, from the board or in, from the people. So not I'm, increase our tax rate anymore. So what I'm just saying right now is that I think if, if you know, we adopt what, what David is saying, his recommendations would be um, as action items now, and then it buys us buy ourselves some time to have that much larger discussion about the you know general tax rate the debt and the, all that stuff encumbered with numbers that have really been looked at and analyzed so i'm not saying walk away from it john i just don't think that we should take an action to recommend it because i don't think we have enough I, i'm analysis. not saying recommend it i said it would be a good non-binding ballot question at, at some point but you have to give people information and we don't have the information well, to give them to make an informed decision so can we so do it seems like option three and four initially, and then um, maybe as far as how much to take from stabilization, could maybe Linda and Chris talk and whoever else talk mm -hmm. about what would be an appropriate amount that wouldn't jeopardize a bond rating, but at the same time would allow us to kind of prop up the enterprise fund mm -hmm. and, and as a third option? Yeah, and again, you know, my, my talking point on the stabilization is that we're moving it from one reserve to another reserve. It's just a change on the balance sheet. So I, and I'd be curious though if David Eisenthal thought it was a problem. What I've heard repeatedly is you don't want to use stabilization to start funding your day-to-day -day operations. So I, I'm only suggesting we use it to, to plug into the reserve fund. Wait, what you, what you're saying to but wait, you're saying sewer, yeah, sewer to offset the budget. We're saying sewer debt. So I see three town meeting articles. One mm -hmm. for 130,555 to come out of free cash and go towards sewer debt. Yes. Mm -hmm. or, or stabilization. I think well, it, no, it's got to no, be I one think, or the other, yeah. right? Yeah, it's gonna be, I would say free cash. Free yeah. cash. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And then and then two kind of in item four there, because I think we need one for item A and one for item B, yep. right. so to speak. Mm -hmm. That would have to depend on each other. So that's yeah, like yeah. End up with an increase in taxes. So. Exactly. Exactly. So mm -hmm. I see those things kind of coming up for special town meeting, and then we should probably also do one, you know, not as per time bond report, but we probably need some kind of rate increase just to keep on track with rate to, to not do a rate increase. I think we need to look at the rate rates there. So the way that um, I've been telling people that have called me about the sewer rates yeah. is oh, I voted no on the increase last time around. I, my thinking is that if we can pass some of these other measures to prop up the reserves, um, People understand that eventually there's going to have to be increases, but maybe not 15 or 20 percent increases. Yeah, yeah, I'm not I saying that. No. And so, yeah, yeah. And I'm so, saying one, two percent. <laughs> yeah, yeah, something. And so I just want to be able to tell them that look, we everybody, even whether or not they're sewer customers, is now paying for the sewer reserves and sewer enterprise funds. So you've got to do your part too as a sewer customer. That mm -hmm. then I can feel like I'm. And that works done. right into number five, where the commercial area offsets the whole town budget. Maybe that's something we, we hold we hold our cards there yeah. until town meeting mm -hmm. and kind of see how everything else shakes out and you know not to do I think we're Whatever doing a lot way you here. look at it yes the commercial does contribute because they do pay a higher tax and still some of their 
tax money goes into the CPA, they still are paying the 3% as everybody else yeah. is also. So whether or not they're the top consumers and also they're the top yeah. users and the top payers. Mm -hmm. So they're still contributing. Yeah, they're, they're all still contributing they're all a little still bit to, to it all. Yeah. yeah. I was also uh, just reminded by a listener from the viewing audience. Um, there was uh, a discussion at one point when we were talking about CPA funds that you can actually take a 0% loan from them. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah, your, your own bylaw contemplates that. Yeah. 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 Um, right? So that's just, again, something to think about in terms of the, how we utilize the CPA funds. Would the CPA committee have to approve that, or is that a town? Yes. Meeting vote or yes. Vote? Both. Both. Yeah. Um, yeah. Go ahead, Linda. I just want to understand. So we were expecting a $29,000 deficit for fiscal 19. And you're saying now we had a $20,000? Yes. Yeah, so $22,000 above. Yeah, so but We were expecting a deficit. So right. last weekend when I was putting this memo together, I was, I was looking into where I thought, I didn't have June numbers okay. yet, so I was projecting June expenses, being conservative with both revenues <coughs> and expenses, yeah. and I came up with a shortfall of 29,000. Today I got the information from Justin and ran the numbers, and it's a $22,000 surplus, so I was off by calling right. 40, and it, 50, dollars And I don't know whether he took into account, I know one of the bills we're paying this week is $4,000 from the water is paying to sewer, so that will be another four thousand, I think, because that wasn't on the warrant yet. He wouldn't have had it. Okay. So it's it's the exact. So what is the hole that we're trying to fill if we're writing a surplus? How much money are you looking? For? Well, your 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 FY twenty twenty budget is going to be uh, hit with two problems. One of which is, is that the revenues are not meeting the targets for even twenty nineteen. Uh, and the expenditures for 2019 were, were light because we weren't employing consultants okay. so or an engineering so, you're not it so uh, I'm expecting anemic revenue and uh, more robust expenses. So, so this 150,000 is in, in your point two is what we're we're looking for 150,000 from various places. I think this time next year we're going to be looking at a shortfall of 150,000 okay. dollars. That's my crystal ball. So that's the that's the mission right now is to find 150,000. Well, more, right? more, more than that. More than that. Because that gets us through 20. We're not plugging the issue of the depleted yeah, reserves. Because if we keep on that rate, we're going to be 300,000 in debt in okay. 2021, I guess. So. so can I make a motion that we pursue item three, about 135,555 from free cash, mm -hmm. and then also item four, and uh, what do we want to put on a time limit on there? Do we want to put four or five years, one, three, uh, whatever you want to do, so that we can give people a number? Do we want five years? Five years? I think five years, yeah. Yeah, and maybe that's something that... And then yeah. if, if we can phrase it, that it will automatically re revert back if they... No, you have to go back to time okay. meeting, right? Well, then you're going to have to remember five years. <laughs> Somebody will remind us. Yeah, sure. Oh, yeah. But um, so I'd like to move on those two, and then, but I'd like to hold off on the stabilization until Linda and whoever else needs to be in that conversation can find the right amount mm -hmm. because I don't want to recommend it. Yeah, because I don't mm -hmm. want to take any from stabilization. I know me. But I'll second your motion. Okay. That's, sure. that's going to be pending uh, the vote on four. So are you going to? Correct. It has Cap. to go to town meeting. We're asking to go to town meeting with a warrant. Yeah, but are you going to? Well, because he's talking about raising the rates. No, we'll just. No, we're not talking about raising the rates. All right. So this would be to cap the rates at this point. For no, 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 we're years? not capping the rates. We're no, 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 we're we're it's we're the CP. The we're rates. we're gonna do the CPA switcheroo for five years. We're gonna take one percent. One percent. CPA now put it to sewer. So, that's so, in no so in exchange, will you leave the rates the same? That's that's going to be the first question. For now, yes. For now, no. yeah. I think, I, I think what we're for the we have for the period of five years for CPA. I, I don't know. Oh, yeah. The, the, yeah. The, will yeah. keep the sewer rates the same? Yeah. No I don't think so. 
I mean, we we'd have to raise them just based on uh, that'd just be your inflation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd like to get through this first and address this issue, and then we will address um, the rates. Uh, we we now not doing the sewer rate increase this year. Um, we voted on that already, so we would have to have that come up again. I mean, essentially, if if we didn't pass See, three and we are, four, we are going to be our hands are going to be tied to do one. Yes, correct. Absolutely. So that and it might be in the fifteen to twenty five percent. Yeah, range. yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we won't have any other options. Correct. And, and so for people that are watching at home, the goal here is if these are passed or all the, the third option as well, that there will be no increase in your tax rate that you're paying. Correct. Yeah, yeah. It'll just be existing funds moving around. Just around. Yeah. Yes. Moving around. Yes. Okay, so we had a motion and a second. Uh, any other discussion on that? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. All right. Um, announcements or town administrator report. Um, and I have, have yeah, one? something too that somebody wanted me to bring up. Okay. So town administrator report real quick. Any highlights there, David? Uh, let me find it. Okay. <laughs> no problem. Uh, no, there's... I gave a lengthy one last week, so there's not much to uh, talk about this week that we haven't already covered in the course of this meeting. Um, the Moody Bridge Road, uh, the federal government has reached out to Chris before to talk about a redeployment of, of uh, resources in order to improve Moody Bridge Road west from the visitor center to the Jade portion rather than investing it in the west the easterly side. They do want to remove the uh, concrete barrier and erect a, a uh, gate with a, with a lock. So that's what they're looking, they're talking about right now. So when we have some firm numbers, we'll come back and talk to the board. Um, I put in a graph showing the uh, three buildings, uh, the senior center library and fire substation. Fire substation, I know they're meeting with the, uh, with the contractor on July 31st in order to come up with a schedule, so this is an estimate. Uh, but I think that's helpful to show what's going to be happening when so that we can plan it appropriately. North Hadley Village Hall is on for the 27th. Uh, our fiscal year ended very well for us. Um, I'm seeing increases in um, <coughs> increases in free cash based upon the um, Expenses being lower than expected by about 166,000. Um, sewer shows a slight increase of uh, 22,000 minus the amount that you mentioned there, Linda. Uh, water added about a quarter of a million. Hadley Media unfortunately showed us a very small deficit of about $361. Uh, that's a comfortable deficit. And then the revenues um, uh, showed a lot of uh, increase. Taxation was above 100% uh, collection, 100 point, and it called 100 and a half a point. Local receipts were 118% above uh, expectations. State aid was 110% uh, above expectations so all of that generates free cash so these are good numbers to have FY 2020 budget we're still in a situation where the state has not passed a budget uh, we're one of two states in the Union Ohio being the other one that has not got a budget in place um, they have passed a continuing resolution of about Five billion dollars to keep the government going for July, and they're talking about a second continuing resolution of the same amount for August. The leadership of the House and Senate are meeting with Governor Baker. I'm not entirely sure how this is uh, shaking out because a lot of this happens behind closed door, but 
Governor Baker has sent signals that he's not pleased with a second request for a continuing resolution. So hopefully that'll get the conference committee to decide the issue. And he already stated publicly that he's in no rush to settle it either, so. <coughs> yeah. Um, and that's about it. Um, so the thing that came up was, um, it was prompted by David reminding everybody of the deadlines for the fall town meeting articles and also the CPA committee. So they're looking for anything to be presented to them by August 9th, mm -hmm. I guess. Um, so one of the projects that had come up, um, it started with the historical commission, uh, had to do with the town green and looking at placing possibly um, markers of some kind, historical markers. And in the process of that, um, the idea was floated about possibly um, putting up a gazebo of some kind. So Tim Nyhart had um, volunteered and, and taken a, a fair amount of time to just, you know, kind of brainstorm and, and give some uh, renderings and the like. So then that, didn't go well at the CPA meeting last year when it was presented. Um, and then with further reflection on the part of the Historical Commission, they said, you know, we really want to, we, we don't want the gazebo to kind of whipsaw other things we're trying to do. So really what they were, that they're retaining their focus on historical aspects of putting up markers around town or whatever. Um, so the question was posed to me, um, was the select board interested in a gazebo on the town green, town common, sorry. So you got me all messed up there. <laughs> <laughs> on the town common, um, and if so, did we want to present something to CPA um, by August 9th or drop the project for now? And so I said I would bring it to the board tonight. I didn't see his uh, gazebo renderings. Um, who did the, who? Tim. Tim, Tim Neihardt did it. However, I know uh, just my experience with the uh, beer garden we had there and kind of that community activity was really great. I thought it was a really great community experience. I thought having the benches there of structure for people to gather under power, all those things there on the common could create a lot of really great events to happen in the community there. Um, so that being said, I'd be for doing something there. And I don't know what Chris has thoughts yeah. with in regard to that too. So I, I don't know quite, I'd be happy to do something, but how do we get all these ideas kind of pulled yeah. together so that we have one cohesive plan moving forward and not a bunch of different ones that are mm -hmm. not necessarily conflicting, but I think, I think people have that vision of wanting to do some kind of community gathering space there. How do we implement that? Yep. So, so I mean, maybe the logical thing to do is to wrap it if Chris is going to be kind of doing more of a comprehensive yes. plan. It, it, maybe we could just ask Chris to think about the idea of yeah. a gazebo or community yeah. structure yeah. of some kind. Gazebo is, is, is a good thing. I, I, I have uh, Benches, gazebo, even bring in different people. Bike, bike, bike. The, the, the sidewalk, uh, and then uh, with it, we, it will attract a lot of uh, posi positive activities. Um, the grass. Aren't there some? Um, aren't there some guidelines on historical town commons on what you can do and can't yeah. do? It's on the town web page under select board licenses yes. and yeah. permits. So I don't so know about somebody, sidewalks on the town common. We have sidewalk right now. Mm -hmm. We can't area. maintain a waterfall. The sidewalk, We're going to maintain uh -huh. all this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, yeah. the, it will also... It, 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 well, it, the it, only it, sidewalk we have is what the uh, DC bike. put DCR. through there for the bikes. Mm -hmm. yeah. I yeah. think Chris was trying to finish his thought I here. Thought. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean to interrupt you. Yeah, so the the whole uh, common. common. You, we want to make it uh, um, positive to bring in people. Mm -hmm. The current sidewalk will be enhanced. We have the roads uh, needs to be uh, updated. Also, uh, because it's common, we also have to um, bring it up to date with ADA compliance. Right now, somebody who, the way it is set right now, is not uh, compliant. Right. And so, 
the lighting, uh, we can also put in historical light fixtures in the area. Okay. I mean, maybe now, maybe what, what? we need maybe we need more of. I mean, I'm just thinking it's almost on par with a building project. We need we're gonna a plan committee, yeah. and we're going to need a plan. But uh, that was why I told the CPA chair that I can go. I just wanted to get his thoughts mm -hmm. that uh, when I come before the board, and then uh, once the board authorizes me, then I can go detail mm -hmm. with him. So that's. I do know it's a historical area, and if it's with plan, and then we go, it may take up to two to five year completion, but at least each stage. So what about doing the southern portion of the common looking at, because I would imagine that any structure, if we want to go that direction, would be on the northern North part. Side. Yeah. So what about doing the southern portion as far as a rehab or fertilizing and turf improvement or whatever we want to do there, since that'll be maybe a more simplistic project to start off with and then see if CPA will support that. And then if that's the direction that the- Yeah, on that southern side, we have people parking on the- Well, that's another there. issue there too. Well, I think that's something that, that would be within this also. plan. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's within this plan. Yeah. Yeah. But, but maybe the, the turf issues and the improvement of the existing, without worrying about structures and things like that, it might be easier to tackle in stages. I don't know. Is that, or maybe we just wait until the annual town meeting. <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know, personally, I'm not in any rush on, you know, pushing a, a gazebo through. I, I think it's better to put it in the context of a comprehensive plan and I then wonder, how that plan shakes out you can do phase one yeah. too. restrictions i think we all need to read the restrictions on town commons since we have one of the oldest town commons in the mm -hmm. state what restrictions are we talking about the ones that are on the use of the town commons mm -hmm. guideline that were in place these are our, our these are our restrictions. Okay. Yeah, they're not. I've state always enforced them on your behalf. But there are some <laughs> issue on because yeah, yeah. it but came on the application. Some, I would imagine there are some state restrictions too that we should look okay. at. I'm not aware of any. No, for town commons. No, there's Probably no through historic. It's historical. Historical. Yeah. There's no. Yes. Even um. We'll have to look into that. Select board licenses and permits use of town commons. Did we for thoroughly discuss the <laughs> gazebo? Yeah, so I, so I, think, I think, think we're there. The I think short answer is no. We're not going to bring anything to CPA now, but we're going to. Let's keep the conversation going. Let's not kill the conversation. No, I, I think it should yeah. be part of if if Chris is offering and, and starting a process of looking at the common mm -hmm. and what the possibilities are, then I I think we. Yeah. We don't kill it. We, we no, let I, it continue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just don't think we'll do it by August 9th. Right. First right. No, I, yeah. I, I, I'm not going to go before CPA for this right. August 9th. Okay. Yes. Because uh, I need to get approved from the board and we'll begin the legwork. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. So my thinking is uh, the earliest will be the, the fall. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry, the spring. Spring, yeah. Yes. Yeah, so I'm, I want to voice support for what Chris is suggesting and yeah. then ask you to take this into account mm -hmm. in your thinking. Yeah, I, I think I'm fully supportive of the, the concept, just the detail is the tricky part, I right. think. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay, great. Uh, any announcements? I just have one um, to the family of Charles Hulse, H U L S C, um, his wife, John Kaminsky. They lived on E Street, passed away. A week ago, a week and a half ago. So condolences to them and their families. Jane, you had a quick announcement. Yes, the Friends of the Hadley Council on Aging is holding a reception. Uh, thank you and goodbye to Suzanne on Thursday, August 29th, between 1:30 and 3:30. I hope you will all be able to come. 1:30 to 3:30. Yes, it's a Thursday. At Most Holy Redeemer. I'm sorry? At most Holy Redeemer? Yes. Okay. No, we wouldn't all fit in here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for doing that. The common. Yeah, the common. The common. Uh, <laughs> we have air conditioning where we are now. It's there probably we not <laughs> <laughs> uh, Any other announcements? Oh, uh, yeah. Executive session minutes. To be We're working on that. Working on it for when? We said we'd bring it to you in August. August, okay. 
and then uh, I would ask for a motion to adjourn, but I'm going to ask for a motion to move into executive session. I have questions about going into executive session for what you're proposing. Okay. And that should not be done in open session. Well, we're talking about two different things. We're talking about um, reorganization of DPW, which would affect union positions, and so that we have to think about uh, how we're going to approach the union. And then we have a non-union employee who's asking that we uh, 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 reopen the contract negotiations, so that's an executive session right there. Just want to be sure. All right. So compliant, Joyce. <laughs> well, you, you gotta, you know, some of these things when I was looking at them, mm -hmm. I was questioning whether or not they should be done in open session. No. Okay. Can I have a motion? Oh, you always do it. Okay, um, I'll make a motion <laughs> that we go into um, executive session. Uh, Whoops, sorry. Um, for purposes of discussing um, possible uh, staffing reorganization as well as a contract for non union personnel. Second. Okay. As chair of the How Do We Select Board, I state that the board has moved and seconded to enter into an executive session and that I state that discussing the matter in open session will have an adverse effect on the town of Hadley. And we just need a roll call vote. Yes. Bill? Yes. Keegan? Yep. Stanley? Yes. Trumbull? Yes. You can say goodnight. So, goodnight. Good night. We will move into executive session not to be reopened. Say goodnight, TV5.